Ready? So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the sine of x over 3. Alright, so so far what you guys have is, um, I wrote up the paragraph, right? I told you guys the paragraph is extremely important to make sure that you understand what the graph is going to look like. It's extremely important for you to understand what the graph is going to look like. It's extremely important for you to understand what the graph is going to look like. Got it? So, if you guys notice, these graphs goes infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. Keeps on going. That's why I have the dotted lines. But we're just going to be focused on one period. What it takes for our graph to complete a cycle from your starting point to do its stuff and then go back to where the starting position would be again. A couple of things we want to remember about our graph. The height of the graph from the x-axis to this distance is 1. Right? It goes up 1 and down 1, which we call our amplitude. And that's how we determine what is our number in front of our function sign. Well, in your regular function, you actually have 1, so that's why it's 1. Then we have our bx minus c and d, where b is going to affect our period, which I'll show you how to do. c tells us to shift left or right, and d tells us to shift up or down. Now, in this example, we do not have a shift left or right. We don't have a d, a shift up or down, and we don't have a, a number other than 1 in front of sign. So therefore... You can say that the only thing you have to do is mess with the period, right? Because the amplitude is going to be exactly the same, and there's going to be no shifting left or right. So that's pretty good. So when graphing, what I'd like you to do is just graph a nice line. Now, one thing I want to make, One, one thing I want you guys to understand is when you when you find a graph of sine curve, what we notice is there's four important points. Kind of really five, but five is like that's where you start off at. So not really including your starting point. The next point is what we call the maximum height. Then you go to where it crosses, right? The intercept. And then we go to our minimum point. And then the last important point is where we go back to our starting point again. Right? So there's going to be four important points. And if you notice, each one of these four points are all evenly spaced out from each other. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to evenly space out four points. Now, we know that the last point is, remember, our period, what it takes. So remember, our paragraph is 2 pi. It was, um, that was your period. Well, now I said our period has changed. We need to you know, change this up. So I need to look at, remember our period, what is over here? Period is 2 pi over b. All right? So our b, if you look at this, remember, guys, I told you about x divided by 3 is the same thing as 1 third x. So this can be rewritten as 2 pi over 1 third. Right? So then, yes, when you multiply by your reciprocal, that cancels out. You get 2 pi times 3 over 1. 2 pi times 3 is 6 pi. So that means instead of my last point, instead of being at 2 pi, it's now going to be 6 pi. Okay? Make sense? So then halfway is going to be what? 3 pi. 3 pi. Now, it gets a little confusing when you don't have something that's divisible by 4, all right? Um, I don't really want to be using fractions or decimals in here, but you guys could say, well, half of 3 would be like 1.5, right? Theoretically, yeah. right? Now, a way to kind of get around this, guys, is what we do is I said there's four important points. So if I said 6 pi, to find out what your important points are at, you would divide by... Four. So 6 pi divided by 4 gives you 3 pi over 2. So my first point is actually going to be 3 pi over 2. And if you guys got 3, three over 2, it's the same thing as 1.5, right? Yeah. So that is the way that you can kind of help you determine what these points are. 
So now if I add 3 pi over 2 plus 3, so to get from here to here is it going to be another 1.5 or 4.5, right? Well, 3 halves plus 3 pi, doing your mathematics, will give you uh, 9 pi over 2. <coughs> All right. If you just add 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2, you'll get 9 pi over 2. Okay? 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. Okay? So now, all I need to do is I know my amplitude is the same, and it's going to end at 6 pi. So we just look at a sign and we say, okay, well, it starts here. I don't need these points anymore. Goes up to here. It crosses here goes down to here, and then comes back up. And then we notice it goes on and on forever. All right, but for right now, we're just gonna work on graphing it at one period. And then next time we'll work at doing two periods. Javier, did I need to have you move them? Um, Any so questions on this, question. on what I just did? It did? Okay. Well, what you do then to include two full periods is you just keep on continuing on. <coughs> yes, keep on adding um, 3 power 2 to each one. I mean, so we have to four points from our last point. And just, whatever your point is, just add to the next one, add 3 pi over 2. You get it? So just add 9, then divide by, you know, your 2. Yes? What did you get the like, 1.5 and 4.5? Like, where did from? I, I was just, like, I just did in my head 3 and 0, so half of that. Oh. Remember, like, so I just did 3, half of 3 is 1.5. Oh, okay, well, same thing, you know. The, um, that was just me to, like, kind of get a mental picture. I'd say, oh, 1.5, what is that? But it's probably easiest just to say, well, 6 pi is my period. Divide that by 4. That's what my increments are, are 3 pi over 2. So as long as I just add 3 pi over 2, I'll get my next okay. period. Okay?